Well, I, mean, I think you have to emphasize, you know, what, what you emphasize every day you're going to get in, in many ways. And I think, you know, taking care of the basketball is, uh, is a huge thing. Um, you know, not just by your point guard or your perimeter people. It's, it's everyone has to value the ball. And it starts every day with your, your, your practice habits and the things that you emphasize. And, um, you know, I thought, you know, our team in general last year, I was very comfortable with us uh, and how we played. We didn't turn the ball over uh, as much as maybe ever in, in, in maybe my head coaching career at Dayton. I, I could be wrong on that, but I felt like we really took care of the ball um, and shared it really well last year. So it'll be the same emphasis here. You know, you can't win uh, at this level. Uh, you can't do any of the things that you want to do. Um, obviously, by turning the basketball over. So, you know, that'll be a big emphasis as well. Next question. Okay. What's your first month been like? As much of a whirlwind as I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of things uh, coming and going. Um, you know, you, you're, you're meeting a lot of people. You're meeting a lot of former players. You're meeting a lot of people that are important to the program. Uh, you're focused. You know, as much as you possibly can on your current team and your roster and your and your workouts and all of those things. And then, you know, the the big eye, you know, that big elephant in the room is recruiting. You know, when you get when you take over and you get ready to get started and you, you're trying to put your your stamp on things from recruiting. Um, you know, you're spending a lot of time on that. So um, I, I expected it, though. I think the one good thing is, you know, like I said when I first got here, I was going to try and do a million things right away and uh, just try and do the little things that we needed to get done with our players here, getting our staff intact, making sure that we had the staff that felt we needed to have here, um, feel we have that. And, um, you know, we're getting ready to finish up recruiting here in, in April. And I think once that happens, hopefully we can really start to get our feet on the ground, get our summer program ready to go. Uh, started to get our June, May and June program ready. Uh, July will be right around the corner again, and then we'll be heading into the fall. So it's, it's going to be, a, I think every month's going to be feel the same. You're just going to be on the run quite a bit. You mentioned recruiting, and I know you can't talk specifically about anything, but how important um, when you take over a new job, like a guy landing in April, you see a lot of teams, how important is that for you and your staff to, to formulate a plan of what you want to do for this 2018 class? Yeah, the two live periods are always a crapshoot, and I don't, I don't necessarily mean that by, you know, if, you, if I took over the Indiana job, if I took over another job. When you change jobs and sort of the landscape changes, these two evaluation weekends can become, you know, in many ways non-impactful non if you're not organized because you're just looking at hundreds and hundreds of kids and uh, you have to try to be focused. And if it's a normal year, you know, you're going out there and you're really in many ways just evaluating young guys, but you're hammering in the guys you've recruited for a couple of years. And that's not our case right now. We're having to make evaluations and we're also trying to get in uh, on certain guys and we're also trying to you know, do a great job with the underclass people that, as much as we can before we see them in July and get them to campus in June. So uh, we just want to be efficient in the period and stay with sort of the guys that we, we like and then continue to evaluate the young guys. And then as we continue to get more information on some guys that stand out that maybe we weren't aware of, you know, you kind of play it by ear. But this is a big class for us. We're going to have a lot of opportunity on the floor for, for people that are coming in in that class. So we're attractive right now. And... Um, you know, we just have to be very, very smart and, and make sure that uh, we're not wasting a lot of time. One follow up on that. I know you talked about the in crowd out approach as a press conference. I know you've gone around it and met with different programs, coaches around the state. I guess, how has that message being received um, from your perspective? All positive. You know, I think, you know, I, I didn't leave, you know, once we got done with the incoming class from 2017, once we stopped spending. I don't want to say spending time, but once we were done with that class and they were solidified and we didn't have to go back in or, or do more work with them, um, in particular, spent a lot of time just in the state for about three days. We only had about three or, three or four days left in the period and just spent them in the state. And uh, we're able to hit multiple high schools and coaches and say hello. And uh, we were able to get, you know, some, some you know, the, the recruiting days and the contact days that we were allowed to do, we did. And I think it's been very positive. I think it's. I think that in general, what I feel is the state of Indiana, the high school coaches in Indiana would love for Indiana to be good all the time, and I don't. I don't anticipate that changing. And what's the biggest surprise you learned during your first month working with Indiana? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if anything's really surprised me a whole lot. Um, I think the one thing that surprised me, maybe in a positive, has been how 
uh, our current guys team on campus has has uh, responded to the change and also um, has been very very mature about their approach and I thought that was very very you know sometimes you can really uh, like I told them, it's very difficult to get anything done in three weeks when you don't know somebody. But I feel like with their approach and what we tried to put together for about a four-week period of time, they took advantage of, and they improved. We had some guys really do some nice things in a three- or four-week period of time on the court with us. And uh, I was real pleased with that. I was, you know, their their uh, acceptance of what we were trying to do was very good. That was surprising. Um, I'm not real sure that there's been a whole lot, you know, in the first month or so on the job that I, I didn't know was coming, uh, whether that be good or bad, though. Um, I don't know, uh, just challenging. I think, you know, one thing that's always challenging is you're, you're trying to get to know, you're trying to get to know uh, your current team and their families and their coaches. And I think what's been challenging is the amount of time that you don't have to do everything that you want to do. So, you know, especially with this last part of the, of the period being over on Sunday, you know, the, the fact that finally we, you know, I don't have to leave the campus or our staff doesn't have to leave it should give us our first breath of like, okay, we can sit here and we don't have to leave the office. We don't have to get scattered around. We can actually be together here and start to get some things going. So I think this, you know, the amount of time that's, you know, you want to invest in certain things, you just can't. We're very pleased about the three guys that are that have accepted to stay. You know, like I said, you know, one of the things in recruiting, you work so hard to get a kid to say yes, that when something like this goes down, you know, you're reluctant. You're you're reluctant to trust again. You're reluctant to do certain things as a family. And those guys welcomed us with an open door. We sat down. We talked about a number of things. And uh, you know, I think the one good thing, the one common thing that everyone should feel good about here is. I think all three families and all three kids in general love Indiana. They love Indiana basketball. They love the passion of the fan base. Uh, the university uh, clearly stood out in their mind with the education, uh, that those guys were excited and didn't want to relinquish that. I think they just needed some, you know, some, some, uh, some confidence in what was coming um, is, is so, sort of some of the same things that they uh, sort of signed up for on the first go around. So very, very, very pleased and also, you know, very uh, thankful that those guys had continued to trust us because when you're building a program um, and you're trying to do it your way, the one thing that, that really can get tricky is when you have to add mass numbers and the class, so to speak, isn't broke down as it normally would be over year after year. We have seniors, juniors, sophomores, and freshmen. And in many ways, that class, by if it didn't show up, would really end up being about a nine person overhaul within about a two year period of time and how that tears down and how you get better, you know, with, you know, freshmen going to sophomores and sophomores to juniors, that improvement's really important in the development of a program. Not the guys can't leave early or whatever, but the rock, the, the foundation of what you're doing is guys, you know, a core group of guys getting better and getting older and you have experience in front of young people that are coming in. And those three guys not coming would really put us in a situation, in my opinion, where we were, we're really looking at heavy, heavy turnover with young people in the near future. Coach, you mentioned that experience a little bit of his time over there and Colin Hartman and Tim Larkin. Just what were those conversations just like and seeing how he grows as a team and what he wanted to do? Uh, you know, Colin and I had a, a number of talks. Um, you know, I think the one thing that stands out about Colin is everything that was told to me on the front end about him as a person, as a leader, as a key cog, so to speak, in the program's wheel uh, was true. And, it, you know, I think didn't take long to figure out, you know, what he's about, what he's been through, and uh, what he wants to be about now is, I think, a better finish, an opportunity to help um, establish something here on the front end, of, you know, where he can be attached to something new. And uh, he's been good. I mean, he's really good. He's he's worked very, very hard in rehab. He's got a long way to go. Um, he's chosen to stay here all summer, um, not take any time away. He's chosen to stay here all summer and continue to rehab and stay here on campus with our staff. So I think that's going to be a big, big help for us as we continue to, you know, build towards, you know, the summertime when everybody's here. You know, he's going to have a really good feel for what we're doing. And real quickly, just to follow up on that, do you have a timeline of when you expect him to be able to participate in the more routine workouts that you mentioned? 
He participated in workouts this spring. Um, he didn't miss one, so he had the avail he was available for every workout. He's sort of like on an every other day approach, not an everyday approach. And we limited all contact in, in the spring, so he was basically in a in a functional basketball workout setting, uh, no, no competition. Uh, win competition and all that stuff, I'm not in a rush. I don't think anyone's in a rush to put him in those situations. The goal will be for him in November to sort of feel, hopefully feel as, as good as he can once we get ready to start the season. Yeah, I think all four guys now that the semester's getting ready to end are all going to get ready to dive into um, the NBA process, which is all of them have received feedback from the advisory committee. They all understand where they're at. Uh, OG is obviously moving in a, in a direction of, of you know, going to be evaluated physically by the NBA, and then, you know, he'll go off into the draft. The other three guys are going to have to go through the process of getting feedback from directly from teams, and then hopefully at some level find out whether they're invited to the combine. Um, if you're invited to the combine, obviously, I think that's a that's a big step. It puts you in a position to feel like you're, you're one of the, you know, 60 guys that potentially they invite has a chance to maybe be drafted. If not, then you have to continue to evaluate what the teams are telling you, um, you know, in works out workouts, meetings, whatever they're going to get. So I think all four all all four of them uh, are confident. I know OG's on his way. Um, I think Thomas has continued to to really push towards you know finding finding answers out. And I know James and Rob, once they finish up the semester here, so to speak, um, you know, with some finals, I think those guys are also going to get their opportunity as well. Um, I think you said previously you wanted to see him sort of evolving his game from last year's team to this year's team as well. Now with the addition of two other guys that can move around a little bit on the court, anyone that sticks an eye out that kind of impresses you coming in with any other lineup players or any other rotation? Yeah, I mean, I think all the guys did some good things. Um, you know, getting in my eyes on Duran. Um, this spring really put me in a, in a, in, in a uh, I guess, an aggressive mode with him in terms of what he has to do for next year. He's going to be a major, major league uh, player for us next year. The opportunity is there. Uh, he should be one of the most improved players in all of college basketball if we can get done with what we want to get done. And it starts with his work ethic in these next, I guess, 12 weeks physically. He's got to change his body. He's got to change his motor. He's got to prevent injuries. He's got to do some things, which he didn't have the opportunity to a year ago as he entered campus. So he, that's a big step for me, getting a chance to kind of see him and understand. I'd love to put him on a plan, and he's going to do that. I think he'll be here all summer, which is a big commitment for him. Um, I was surprised I hadn't seen Devontae Green play a lot, um, just in watching our workouts with him. He's sort of been in the mode of some of the guys that we I've coached in the past, and he's got some stuff to him. Uh, he's physical. Uh, he can really get the ball to the rim. Uh, we need guys like that. Um, James Blackman's probably the best shooter I've ever been around, uh, just in terms of what we were able to accomplish with him with three weeks and watching him work out in our framework and watching him shoot and do some of the things that he did and looking at his numbers, uh, probably best numbers I've seen um, in my time doing some of the stuff that we were doing. Uh, Rob also shot the ball particularly well this, this spring, and he's in tremendous shape. Um, great uh, character level, Josh Newkirk. Tremendous worker. Um, all these guys have been in the gym extra, but I think Josh brought a real uh, communicate. You know, he communicated. He was. He had a vibe about him when he showed up. That the workouts were important. I think, you know, that stuff. That stuff all helped. Um, I think Jawan Morgan has a chance to be a special player for us as well. Not that all these guys don't have their positives and whatnot, but just off the top of my head, as I look at roles, I look at some things they're going to be asked to do. Uh, I think Juwan could be another guy with an opportunity to really break out as a player with how we play and watching his skill set and what he's doing uh, with the ball in his hands and some things. I think he could really uh, blossom with how we play. I think he's going to have a lot of decision making with us. So just off the top of my head, I think that would be some things. You know, I don't know about that. You know, typically we've been really versatile with like the, I'd say, versatility at the three, four, and five for us where guys can play different spots, guard different spots. I don't know if that's the case with this group. Um, I know this, that I think uh, if all the perimeter guys are back and an incoming guy like Al, um, even Justin Smith, I think we'll have a very, very talented backcourt. I think we'll have a very experienced backcourt. I also think we can have some depth in the backcourt. 
looking at our front court, like I said before, I think Juwan really fits how we play. Being able to space the floor is going to be something that's vital to what we're doing. And uh, he's going to give us a guy, I think, that can really do that. And I think Duran, you know, is going to be a guy that's going to look a little bit different as well. But I don't know yet how we're going to have to play because you, you really don't really know until you start getting out there and seeing what's effective. But I, I feel like we're going to have, um, with a little bit of luck, I think we're going to have a team that can play, um, you know, a couple different ways. Uh, I think that our guards should be, uh, really have a, be, in, in many ways, uh, much improved in terms of their decision making because of, of, of what we're going to ask them to do. And, you know, I don't know depth wise and all that, but I feel like this will be a blueprint to build off of. It won't be one that we're restricted. You know, I think we're going to play the way we want to play. And then the guys that are in the program as they get older, that really helps them. You know, you don't want to restrict things and then keep teaching new things. You want those guys to be experienced as they get older. So uh, I'm not sure yet, uh, but, you know, all things go well, health and all that stuff. I think our guard. Our guards, that's going to be where our strength is. To follow up real quick on on Juwan, do you envision him more post player? Or, you know, when you talk about he can really be a, you know, have a big season as a low post guy, as an inside outside guy? Or, you know, Duran has terrific hands and footwork. And I think the whole key to his game and his development starts with his body. Uh, he doesn't really even have to touch a ball here for about four or five weeks. We've got to get his body and his motor uh, ready to go for heavy minutes. He can't play heavy minutes right now, and uh, that, that'll hurt him. When he can play 25-plus minutes a game without fouling, you're going to see a guy that can do a lot of different things. Yes, post, operate off of the post with him. Offensive rebound with a great motor. I think, you know, get fouled. He's a good free throw shooter. He'll get fouled. Defensively be able to be a presence for us, be physical um, inside with his size, and also, you know, do some things, do some things in transition that he hasn't done before as well. So I think there's some things we're going to ask him to do where he's going to have to really grow up. But it, it it starts up here and it starts with his body. You know, he's he uh, he's got great hands and feet. He's got great hands and feet. Uh, we just have to find a way to when you guys see him in October and November, you say, wow, you know, what happened to him? If, if you're not saying that, then we didn't get it done. You know, that's just the way it's going to be. If, you, if we say that and you're like, wow, he looks like a new man, then he's going to have a chance to have a really good year. So we're going to wrap up with Terry and then Josh. On the challenges, I know you haven't been an overtrained guy in the past and you're in, you've inherited that situation, but that whole being able to get the scholarship numbers, right? I mean, is, is that a big challenge? It's not a big challenge yet. You know, we still have four guys right now that one's gone. You know, gee, and we have three more guys that right now could walk in tomorrow and say, I'm not coming back. So when that happens, then you're kind of looking around and you're saying, I want one under. So we have a lot of things coming and moving, but I don't anticipate it being very challenging or, or, or it being a big problem. I think it's going to work itself out. And, uh, you know, c communicating is big right now at this time of year anyway, especially heading into the off season. And, you know, met with the guys a ton on the front end, going to meet with them a ton on the back end as well as they get ready to depart. Uh, for for a summer break, so I think I think those things will sort themselves out as they normally do. Um, we had a couple instances of Dayton where we were over, and at the end of the day, we were ended up being under two or three when it all said and done. So uh, you never can tell, but uh, but we'll we'll sort it out. We inherited it, and we'll we'll fix it. I think that's probably the right way of putting it, the right kind of opponents that all serve a great purpose for the development of the team. Number one, you have to put yourself on a marquee stage as much as you can. Um, when, it, when it starts to talk about the opportunity to play in Assembly Hall, everybody that we bring in here has got to have great purpose, whether that's a national opponent or whether that's a game that we're preparing to play a, a specific style of a team coming from a different league that we'll see later down the road, or just in terms of you know, you're building your non-conference resume around numbers at times. You know, sometimes you're looking at those numbers and you're saying, this number can't go here. We want to play this number right here and looking for that, those perfect fits. Um, but it's got to be done with great intelligence. It's got to be done with great, 
you know, with great pride in the development of your team. It also has to have your your fans excited about what you're doing. Um, you know, this year we'll take on a certain level what we can pull off. Uh, down the line, though, I think you'll see a different model uh, with what we're trying to do, and it's going to take some time. You're not able to just recreate the wheel one day at a time. I think we're going to have opportunities for home and homes. Uh, I think we're going to have opportunities to, you know, play in whether it be uh, events like Maui or Bahamas one day. I think there's going to be a lot of those things that are on the docket moving forward. And um, it's going to take us a little bit of time to get this year's situation kind of as good as we can get it. And then after that, we'll really start to build, you know, year after year in terms of having things set and done in stone in years to come when we're not really worried about it and everybody knows what's on the horizon.